Well, this is the Quincy Fire Department, a look back. We'll be looking at a collection of photographs, and joining me is Fire Chief Thomas Gorman, retired. Welcome, Tom. Welcome well, back. Glad to be here. Great to go over these uh, fascinating photos that go back quite a few years. Uh, before we get to the actual photos, I do want uh, folks to just, uh, if they don't know your service with the fire department, how many years and how far back does it go? Uh, I was 40 years. My father was 42. So my father went on in 19, uh, 1925 and retired in 1967. And I retired. I went on in 63 and retired in, uh, in uh, 02. So some of these photographs that we will see are before your time. Yes. Let's talk about the photograph that we currently see on screen. Tell us about this. It looks like some kind of drill. What this was, was they just bought this truck. It was a 1964 Seagrave V12 engine. It was bought for the Southeast Expressway. It, uh, it had a foam capacity of 500 gallons of foam and, and water. And that was uh, mixed in a proportional. This is at Moon Island. A lot of the departments would would go to Moon Island to uh, do their uh, drilling because they had the, the these tanks and everything. Might say that these tanks are all gone now because uh, of pollution. You you can't do things that you that you that you used to do. You know, you can dump oil or kerosene or gasoline or whatever and light it a fire and uh, hopefully it uh, wouldn't it wouldn't bother the environment but <clears throat> as things have gone on they found that it did it did have lasting effects well what about the makeup of foam nowadays as far as the environment and as far as the health of the firefighters it has it has no effect on the on the firefighters as as they've demonstrated uh, lately, but uh, they're still ongoing testing. But uh, the, without foam, you, you wouldn't be able to control some of these fires because water water has a great reaction with uh, with flammable fluids. And you had mentioned Moon Island. Now, Moon Island is still utilized today for the fire departments? Yes, it is. The, the city of Boston spent a fortune on, on new burn buildings. And, and because the burn buildings all had to be uh, environmentally safe. And, uh, and uh, they got things in there now that can tell what the temperature is and, and uh, things like that. So is it used by the Quincy Fire Department and it's other communities, yes, Boston it's, as well? Yes, it's used, it's used by Boston mainly, but uh, they open it to other communities, Quincy being one, Weymouth, uh, Logan, um, Milton, uh, all the surrounding towns go there when they, when they want to test a new piece of equipment. And what time frame, what years are we looking at here? This here is 19... Uh, uh, 64. That's when that truck was brand new. It was bought for West Quincy Station to uh, tackle fires in, on the uh, <coughs> on the expressway. Uh, it, uh, it because the ex the expressway was built right in. Uh, well, the, the expressway opened in in around 1957. Okay, so it, the expressway was new at this point. Yeah. Now this was the state of the art. This this truck here. Talk about the white color. Folks are normally well, my father, normally see red. Yeah, my my father um, brought the uh, white trucks to the city. Um, the reason they they could see them better. Hartford, no, not Hartford, but then New Haven was all white and. Uh, there was uh, other communities throughout the country. There was a big thing in, this, in the 70s on, on whether white or lime yellow was a better reflector for, for, for the safety of fire trucks. Uh, but, uh, and then eventually settling on red. 
R they went back, most of the departments went back to the traditional red, uh, red over white, which Quincy is, and a lot of communities around the, the top of the cab is white. And they also use black. And you get down south, you, you start to run into the, the rainbow of fe fleet, we okay. call it. Well, now you talked about white being easily seen and yeah, recognizable. Yeah, yeah. Well, black is on the other end of the spectrum. I, I know. It, it, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the, the half cab is, is, is black or, or white. But not the entire truck. Not the entire okay, truck. Okay, okay. The, uh, you had mentioned New Haven. You were referring to New Haven, Connecticut. Yes, they were a very progressive department. And uh, they found the white trucks uh, color helped to uh, see the trucks at night and it also helped uh, avoid accidents. A lot, a lot has been done in the safety of, of, of fire trucks today. Now this truck here, the driver and the officer would be inside and the other people would be on the, on the back step. Now no one goes on the back step anymore not even for parades or anything like that because of I injuries that occurred with people on riding the back step of the trucks. And it when did that, do you remember when that uh, change took place? It took place in uh, 80, 85. Uh, the NFAPA says the standards and they, <coughs> they said that uh, that no one should be riding on the back step, and they should make every department should make it a practice, which they have. Now you have four door enclosed cabs. You're not out in the rain, the weather, the snow. The National Fire Protection Agency is headquartered here, the NFPA right. in Quincy. This is Vic Davison and Joe Tarchio. Joe had just bought this car brand new. He, he just got appointed. Vic had been on about 10 years. And uh, Joe was always a conniver. He could always. He, talk someone into helping him or, or doing something. A, a, a real good guy. Vic Davis, another good guy. Looks like they're polishing the car. Yes. This is, this is that Engine 5. Joe had just bought that car. He now, was, Engine 5, as far as location in the That's city? in West Quincy. Okay. So we're seeing probably a garage that yeah, is that, on site? Yeah, that's a garage for the house. There's a house out in back of this. This uh, engine fire situates at Copeland Street and Miller Street, right at the corner. And over there is the uh, um, Woodley Bryan School. Okay. That's, that is now owned by the Grossman organization. Now, as far as cars go, could you tell me what kind of car this is? Yeah, it's a 1954 uh, Pontiac. And look at the white walls. Look at, oh, that was a pretty classy car in its day, let me tell you. Looks like a card game going on here. This is down engine six. This is Lieutenant Hayford, and that's Deputy Hooley, and that's Eddie Walters. I don't know who the, the gentleman, a lot of people used to come in the fire station, the older people, and they'd have card games and reminisce and talk about different things. Now, when you were identifying folks, you were going from the left side of the screen to the right. That's right. So the Lieutenant Hayford is right here. That's Deputy uh, Holy. Who must have just lost his hand. Doesn't <laughs> seem too pleased. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were always great card players. And that's Eddie Walters. Oh, this is, uh, there's Eddie Walters, uh, Lieutenant Hayford. Charlie Daly, these two men on the, on the end, I do not know. Going left to right, let's ID these folks again. That's Eddie Walters, Lieutenant Hayford, Charlie Daly, Arthur Salvucci, Tony Ranella. And Engine 6 was located? In Hausneck. And around what period would this photograph and the photograph that came before? That would be around 1946. The, the, the Pontiac one is, is, is 1956. Generations of families that have continued to be involved in the fire service. Yes. This is Eddie Walters and his nephew and, and grandnephew uh, were on the job. Dick, Dick Walters and then his boy, they call him Chucky Walters, was, uh, was on the department. We should mention that uh, you have a son in the fire service as well. Uh, yes, I have a son and, a, and I have a nephew. 
that are both in the fire service. One's a captain on the Quincy Fire Department, and the other one, my boy just made lieutenant in the Braintree Fire Department. Congratulations. Thank you. This is uh, Larry Hanrahan. He, he, he was a lieutenant. Now he is which one? He's starting at, to my left. So he has the smaller of the two fish. That's right. <laughs> Striped bass. Yes. That's uh, John McDermott, and that's uh, Tony Ranella, and senior. This, this is at a firehouse that seems like it uh, maybe went up in what year, 1947? This, they started building it in 46. That's the old, to the, to the left, that's the old station. The new station is under construction here. Oh, so we see the wood to the left and the brick to the right. Right, that's, that's the new station. It was under construction. So this station is? Engine 6 and how is that? You can see Tony Ronella, Bill Egan is, is, is the far left, and uh, Larry Hanrahan right there. And obviously they're showing off. They're, they're showing, showing off their catch. Of course, <laughs> course as, as everyone knows, Howes Neck in those days was big for clams and uh, flounders and cod. And, and, uh, was it not the flounder capital of the world? It was. They'd come all the way from New York and New Jersey. to. They'd come in there by, by the bus loads. The stripers still come every year, and the, and the flounder... Since, since the MWRA has cleaned up the, up the bay, have, have, they tell me have been returning to, uh, to being able to fish them again. Yeah, I heard, uh, I heard that too, that uh, the fish are returning, so that's certainly a good sign. Tell us what we see on screen. This is, an, this is Engine 2, 1947 uh, Peter Persh, built in Houghton, Wisconsin. Uh, this is Eddie McAdams. He, Eddie became a lieutenant shortly after the, this picture was taken. You can see him, he's got his white hat there. He's pretty proud of it. Now, do you know his length of service with the Quincy Fire Department? Uh, uh, he was on probably about 30 years and he, he had a heart attack and died. He was at a, he had just come in to do a report. He had went to Boston. He was stationed at Engine 4 and he went to Boston and uh, the night before, and he came in to do a report, and a, a, down, a little ways down Beale Street, a house fire broke out, and he ran down to uh, help them uh, run the lines, and he, and he uh, suffered a major heart attack, and, and consequently he died. But he, he used to drive this truck, he, and I, let me tell you, he could really drive it. Uh, he, could, he, was, he was very proud of his, his driving skills. How difficult was it to drive one of these trucks? And then how difficult is it to drive a truck today? Well, these were, these were pretty um, hard trucks to drive. <clears throat> they didn't have power steering, didn't have automatic transmissions. Um, you really had a tug to, to, to steer them. And these, in, the, these engines here would get, it'd get unbearably hot inside the cabs because they had, uh, there was no air conditioning and no insulation, so that was one of the big drawbacks of, at the time for cab types of, of vehicles was the heat uh, in the summertime. And not, not so much the cold in the wintertime, but the summer was, if you went any distance, it was brutal. That's uh, Eddie McAdams there with his hat. He had, just, he had just made lieutenant. And again, this is the pumper. Yes. This oh. looks like a snowstorm, and it looks like the Adam Shore Market. That's right. In 1947, uh, we had a tr tremendous year for snow. Uh, it was a major storm every weekend. That's where uh, Don Kent, uh, it used to be Don Dixon, reported the weather, and he, he reported the storms correctly, and after that, WBZ hired him, and uh, he became on Kent. They, they owned the rug store on Quincy Shore Boulevard. Right, they, right. These two fellows here were out shoveling hydrants. Which they'd, is still done today. Still done today. And what they would do is they'd, they'd, they'd bring extra crews in and then they'd, they'd head out from, uh, from wherever they were stationed. These, these two fellows were stationed at Engine 6, Pat 
Sullivan and uh, Eddie Gallagher. And for folks, so they get a sense of where this was taken, again, the Adam Shore Market in the yeah. background. It's right at the Palmer and C Street. They walked all the way from, from Engine Six's quarters up C Street and opened up the hydrants. In those days, as far as traction getting around, uh, chains on tires? Well, big time chains. Chains were uh, every, uh, everybody had chains. Snow, snow tires just started to come out. And uh, most of the snow tires, uh, although she really had a few bucks, uh, were uh, recaps. Okay, what can you tell us, Tom, about this photo? This photo here is Ed Egan. He looks like he's a comedian. Yeah, they, they were having some fun. And, and uh, John Menz, who later became a deputy chief, and his two sons were on, George and, and Lieutenant John Menz. I think he's playing the part of the Tin Man. Yeah. They, they, they always had a, uh, something going on. They, they were very good. And this was taken, the photo was taken at what fire station? This is at Engine 6 run under construction. Which again, Engine 6 is? Howes Neck. Look at the bus and the... Yeah, the, the Eastern Mass Bus, yeah. Eastern Mass Bus? That, that's what it would have been at that time. Okay. What can you tell us about this photo? I don't know the fellow, this is the civilian, but that's Tommy O'Connor. He, uh, With his hand on the car. Yeah, this is at Engine 2 in, in North Quincy. Now this building here, one one afternoon, they, around 1961, they heard a like a crack, a bang, and they, they went down to investigate, and they found out that the piles that uh, were holding the building up had shifted, and there's a large crack developed, so they had to move everybody out of the station right right that day, and uh, put them. Uh, they went up to Wallace and to. to because they, they had no place to be. And then finally, they, they made temporary quarters over in, uh, by where uh, trucks of Quincy are in North Quincy and for a temporary time until they built the new station. Interesting. And what year? This is 1958 or so. That was a Chevrolet, 55 Chevy. What did you have back? in the day. What did you drive? Uh, 54 uh, Ford Skyliner. Okay, this is at uh, what fire station? And this, is at, this, this is at Engine 2. That's uh, Eddie Gallagher, starting at the left. He, uh, that's Buddy O'Connell's uh, uh, brother. Next to him is Bill Lowry. Um, Tommy O'Connor and Tony Ranella. And this again is Engine 2, and Engine 2 would put it in what part of the city? North Quincy. And the year would be in the 50s? This was, uh, I would say it was around 1958. All right, it looks like that there's students, kids involved here with yeah. some kind of a, a, possibly a demonstration and uh, the firehouse that we're looking at. This was the dedication of the firehouse. That's my father out in front. They had opened it to the public. This is uh, the house next station. Oh, this is the opening of the house next station. Okay. It opened in May of 1948. And uh, I would assume the school kids were... It, they from involved the a school trip? Uh, from the Atherton House across the street. This is uh, the beginning of the de dedication that day. And again, the year that we're looking at here? This is 1948. 1948. And the building is, it looks quite modern. It, it was. It was quite controversial with all the windows and everything in it. And they, it was to give it uh, cross ventilation and make it, uh, you know, use the... Uh, use the atmosphere to uh, the temperatures in that time of the year, you know, it gets cool down there. So um, it, it was a new concept uh, to use uh, na natural ventilation. And we should mention that the house before the brick house was a wooden house. It was a wooden house, yeah. It was it had pretty well much had it. it was, that was built around the 1880s. What uh, strikes me are the raised letters. That, uh, that's a rather modern design. Yeah. Uh, the Coletta 
brothers were the were the, the uh, architects for this. There was quite a bit of controversy over a new concept, but you know, times move on. Right. The, in fact, if you go down down a house, house neck, the bu building looks the same on the outside. Back in engine two, that's Tony Ranella and uh, Tommy O'Connor. That's a, that's the purse, the 47, 1947 purse. They they bought two of them, bought one for engine two and one for engine three. This is uh, the house next station. This what this was. They they needed a place to 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 build build the fire station. And the funny thing is that. People say they were, everybody wants a fire station, but don't put it in my backyard. They were going to move to. A, they had a couple of other pieces of land that they were going to move to, but there was too much controversy over. Over they didn't want to listen to the fire engines going out at night and all this, you know, which is a reasonable thing. So they hired Charlie Gordon. And they were a big uh, outfit out of Hingham that moved buildings massive buildings. So this was a small project for them. And they moved the building over and put it on put it on piles. And then they were able to back the the engine and the and the, and the wagon and uh, the ladder truck into the station. And the and the guys lived lived in there. It, it, it was it was kind of rough rough going but they, they were they were good about it so my father says. Once they got set up, they moved it within within a day. Oh, okay. And you would think, how I suppose, where would there be a good place or not a good place to put a fire station? We look now at the amount of fire stations there are in the city. They're almost always up against some kind of residential right. neighborhood. And uh, they they looked at a couple of sites. Uh, uh, over by the over by the uh, the Catholic Church, they looked it over there. Well, nobody wanted to give up any land. They don't want to give up a ball field, so consequently, they they came up with this solution, so which, which has worked out well. We should mention that where was its origi original spot, and where did it move to? Moved a few feet, moved about 50 feet to your to your left. Oh, that's all. Just that's a few all. feet. That's all. Yeah, that's all. The city owned a, a, a pretty good piece of parcel land there. Okay, so no, no wonder why it took a day because yeah. it was just going over a few. Yeah, days. it wasn't it wasn't being put on a truck and taken someplace. No, they they they, they slid it they slid it over, and uh, they put all the uh, blocking up underneath it. Interesting, interesting. I don't know if we have any more photos of this. Yep, we do. Here's a few more from different angles. Yeah, you can see the buildings. It was, in, it was in pretty tough shape. This, of course, is a wooden firehouse. Right. And again, the year for this? This was uh, 1946. They, they, it, it took them about two years to, to uh, build a new station. You know what I notice? I notice how this, it looks like a young kid close to the, uh, the structure, yeah. which... Nowadays, it doesn't oh, seem to be any fencing or anything. No, no. <laughs> you know, when you see construction today, they have to inf inf enclose the fence, fence the properties in. and You couldn't get that close. No. This fire station looks like it's been taken over by Ivy. Yeah. This was uh, headquarters on Quincy Avenue. Known as the Central Fire Central Station. Central Fire Station. And this was probably around the turn of the century. Probably around, uh, 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 this, I'd say around 1914 or so. And uh, of course, in 19 in 1938, they, they they built the new fire headquarters of Quincy. That's when the, the department went on a big uh, surge of, of modernizing the equipment, modernizing the stations. Uh, they built uh, headquarters, they built the Engine 3, and they built Engine 5, and they were supposed to build Engine 6 in, 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 uh, in Howes Neck, but uh, the war came along and all this stuff was put on the back burner. Now, why would a fire station, why would they let a fire station be basically overtaken by vegetation? Uh, beyond me. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yeah. 
the ivory. Yeah, which is covering the whole building. Yeah. Uh, this, of course, would be a wooden structure back then. It was brick. Oh, was it brick? Okay, this well, was because brick. of the arches. Okay. Slate, slate roof. Something like Engine 4 uh, is right now. You know, it's a brick building. Brick was, uh, brick was coming into being used quite, uh, quite often. It was interesting. This is about the end of the Haas eras. Right, we see at the bottom of the screen. We can yeah, see you had uh, a ladder company, a uh, steamer, and a, and a hose wagon. And the hose wagon carried the hose because the steamer couldn't carry the hose. Okay. And the ladder, and the, end, and the ladder carried a complement of, of um, ladders to sit down by the NFPA. How what the standard of how many feet of ladder they they, right. they carry. All right, let's move to the next photo. This is headquarters earlier before the vine just overtook the building. It must be quite a bit earlier. I, I would say so. I, I, I would say it's in, the, it's in the late 1800s. Look at the horsepower. Oh. Uh, there was quite a bit of maintenance. To, you had to know how to, how to handle horses, and you had to have good horses. And if you did any long running, it would take you an hour to get to to, to house neck, I mean, because the horse, the horse would, what what they do is they, if they were going to house neck, they'd ring down the, the town barn, which is, uh, which is now the city barn. How many fire stations would there have been in the city at that point? There was six, and then Engine Seven was built during the war. During which war? During World War Two. World War Two. This is the Sacred Heart Church. This was in February of 1947. A young boy went in to the church and set a fire up in the choir loft. And by the time it was discovered, the fire had taken over the whole church and uh, it, it was destroyed. Total loss. Now, do we know, was the young boy playing with matches? Was it intentional, unintentional? Oh yeah, it was, it was an intentional fire. They, they discovered them in the Sacred Heart Church in Williams Land that night, trying to set a fire there. Do you remember how old the child was? I think he was around 12 years old. Really? Yeah. Uh, he, any, was, uh, he came from North Quincy. He, he was, uh, the and there were no fatalities? No fatalities, thank God. Unfortunately, the building wasn't uh, able to be saved, but, but no they, fatalities. Well, That's what they important. did, they, they took the they took the, uh, the the church down to the, the first floor, and then built it back up. They used North Quincy High School for uh, for masses on Sundays and the holy days. Really, Tom, I want to thank you for uh, joining me. Certainly, to go through some of these early photographs yeah. of the Quincy Fire Department. Do you have any closing thoughts? Well, I'd just like to thank Don Morey for the pictures of the House Next Station. Uh, he, he gave those to me, you know. Talk about the importance of archiving uh, the history of the Quincy Fire Department. And certainly anyone interested in history would, would enjoy seeing this, but it really shows folks how they got to today when you reflect back in the history of anything, in this case the history of the Quincy Fire Department. Yeah, as, you, as you've seen, you know, the evolution of the of the fire station down to Howe's Neck, the, the groups of men, the equipment, how the equipment had changed. It, uh, it, it, it has come a long way and, it's, uh, and it'll even come further, but it's a team effort. And that's that's why you see the the kid around in in these pictures here, some of the Tin Man and stuff like that. Every everybody has a uh, has has to have a good sense of humor because of things that you see. Because the work is serious. This work is serious, and it it kind of relieves the tension. Well, once again, I want to thank you, Tom, for joining me. This has been a look back. I'm Mark Crosby. I was joined by retired Fire Chief Thomas Gorman. I want to thank you for watching this episode of A Look Back.